Hello and welcome back, 7th graders. All right, so today we're starting with something that we've already been taught. You've already been taught how to solve equations with variables on both sides. But we're going to take it one step further today. So what I'd like you to do first is take this problem that's going to pop up, and I want you to solve it on your own. Take this problem right here. 3 multiplied by the quantity 3x minus 4 equals 1 fourth multiplied by the quantity 32x plus 56. Pause the video, write this down in your notes, and solve this. So what did you get? Well, let's see. If you did it correctly, here are the steps. You should have gotten x equals 26. So in review, what are you going to learn today? You're going to learn to solve linear equations that have variables on both sides, identify special solutions, and use them in real life problems. So remember, to solve equations with variables on both sides, you have to simplify one or both sides of the equation if necessary first. Then use inverse operations. Make note as you're doing it. Are you using the distributive property, subtraction property of equality, addition property of equality, etc.? You're going to collect the terms of variables on one side and collect the constant terms on the other by isolating the variable. So try these two on your own. Solve both of these equations on your own. Pause the video. All right, now if you did this, the first one would be 15x plus 6 equals 15x. Using the subtraction property of equality, I subtract 15x on both sides, and that gives me 6 equals 0. Well, remember, this is not true. 6 cannot equal 0. Therefore, this is never true. So what's our answer? It's no solution. Now, that's review. We've done that. Do the next one. If you did it, negative 8y minus 2 equals negative 8y minus 2. You'll notice it's the same thing on both sides. Now, if you use the addition property of equality you would, and added 8y on both sides, you get negative 2 is equal to itself, which is true. Now, this is a new concept. You know that this is infinitely many solutions. That you've heard before. But it's going to be also something else. This equation is an identity. This is identity. Therefore, which means it has infinitely many solutions, which leads to our next core concept. The core concept says this. Equations do not, have one, do not always have one solution. An equation can have infinitely many solutions. But if it's true for all values, it's an identity, which is also infinitely many solutions. So make note of that. Identity and infinitely many solutions mean uh, the same thing with the same problem. Solving real-life problems. Example 4. Modeling with mathematics. So, the, example 4 talks about a boat that leaves New Orleans and travels upstream on the Mississippi River for four hours. The return trip takes only two and, uh, two and eight tenths hours because the boat travels three miles per hour faster downstream due to the current. How far does the boat travel upstream? So let's first start off with what we're talking about. We want to know how far the boat travels upstream. So the first thing that I've always told you to do, that if you don't know something, we use a variable to represent what's missing. So we can put x equals what we need to find. Well, x equals how far, but what don't we know? We don't know how fast the boat travels. So we're going to let x be the speed. More importantly, what type of speed? Well, we're talking about miles and hours. So this is going to be in miles per hour. So x is miles per hour. So if you remember, we're talking about distance here. Distance equals rate times time. We're going upstream and downstream. Well, what do you know about the distance going upstream and downstream? Well, we don't know it, but what do we know about it? It should be the same. So we know that the distance upstream And the distance downstream should be equal. If it's equal, 
What do we do? Well, we write an expression for upstream and an expression for downstream. Now, you should know that distance equals rate times time. That's how you find distance. To find the distance, you take rate times time. Well, this represents distance upstream. This represents distance downstream. So to find the distance, we're going to do rate multiplied by time equals rate multiplied by time. So distance, well, the rate is the speed. Well, we don't know that, so this is what we're going to put. X is miles per hour. So X, miles per hour. Now, if we did the labels, miles per hour multiplied by the time. What is the time going upstream? Well, the time going upstream is what? Four hours. Equals the rate, which we don't know, but we do know what. Well, we'll leave the rate alone. The time going downstream is what? Downstream is 2 and 8 tenths, or 2.8 miles per hour. I'm sorry, 2.8 hours, not miles per hour. So we put labels on these, hour and hour. Now, miles per hour. X represents the miles per hour what? We're going to let this be upstream. But what do we know about downstream? Downstream is three hours faster. So if we're doing downstream, if x is upstream and downstream is three hours faster, we're going to put in parentheses the quantity x plus 3 because that's three hours faster, miles per hour. Now we just solve this. 4 times x is 4x. And remember, hours would cancel. And so really, we're talking about miles here. Uh, and then 2.8 multiplied by x plus 3, and that's review, you can solve this, 4x equals 2.8x plus 8.4. I now use the subtraction property of equality, subtract 2.8x on both sides, that gives me 1 and 2 tenths x equals 8.4, and if I solve that, I get x equals 7. So what does 7 represent? the speed in miles per hour upstream. So 7 miles per hour upstream. But that's not what we wanted to find. We want to find how far. So how this represented distance. Distance equals rate times time. So to find the distance, all I have to do is take rate times time. 7 miles per hour, upstream, well, how many hours did we go? We went 4. 7 times 4 gives me 28. So my answer would be 28 miles. So the boat traveled upstream for 28 miles.